Okay, let me just start off by saying that this is not the video I thought I would be making today, but out of necessity, I'm doing it today because last night uh, I was working on my workstation. I was finishing up designing some 3D files. I wanted to save them to my server as part of my normal workflow. However, last night when I was trying to load my files in, it, it wasn't working. It was just saying unable to open file. And then so I actually went into the server to look at the files, like some properties of them. And what I found out was that the problem was simple. The, the server is just full. There's absolutely no space left on it for to store anything. So um, all my work is kind of halted right now because I can't save things to my server. And yes, I could start saving things to my regular workstation on the hard drive, like locally. That's not ideal because now I'm going to have files in two different places. And so here we are today. This is going to be my new storage server. It might not just be for storage. I have a couple other ideas of um, some virtualization stuff I might want to do. But right now, the most important thing is just expanding my, my network attached storage. So what we have here is what I thought might make a really, really good like home server or, uh, or small business NAS. I really like the NZXT H1 case, just its footprint is so tiny and it just, it's really minimalistic and aesthetically pleasing. This is the version one. I also do have the version two. Actually, let me just pull that out real quick. So what I have here is the version one and the version two. The main difference between these is that the version two was updated to, it's slightly bigger, so it holds bigger graphics cards. It's got bigger, holes in the side panels for better ventilation. And this has a 750 watt power supply versus the version one, which just has a 650 watt power supply. I'm also noticing for the first time that the power button is on the opposite side, which I did not know that was a thing. And we have an extra USB port on top, but I don't really care about any of that today because uh, I'm not really interested in these for gaming. Although I do like these cases and I probably would build a gaming PC in them. I want to put five three and a half inch hard drives uh, into these. And the reason why I have version one and version two was because the drive cages that I'm designing and building, I would like them to fit in version one and version two because there's more version ones uh, out in the wild right now, especially used. You can pick these up cheap and the version twos, although they're expensive because you can really only find them new, they're still manufacturing these today. So it would be cool if these drives fit both cases. So we'll figure that out as we build mine into the version one. I do have other plans for the version two in the future. So it's that old pitch, get subscribed and you can see what I build in this. So without further ado, let's just build this thing. Um, now I do already have, oh, are you crazy? Oh, okay, well, it wasn't actually that hard. So I'm not really sure what the issue was there. I do already have part of a system built in this one. Uh, Cause I was, doing some testing earlier and stuff, and I wasn't planning on making this video this abruptly. But basically what we have in here, uh, you can't really see it because it's all just compact into this brick right here. There's a Ryzen 9 5900X in here. This MSI B450 Gaming Plus Max Wi-Fi ITX board, 16 gigs of RAM. Can't remember what brand right now, and it's too wedged in there to see. So the first thing we need to do is get some of my drive cage mounts here mounted. Now I won't lie, it's been a little while since I've worked on this, so I don't really remember where I was at with my design and stuff. I believe these are the pieces I need here. These were all prototypes, I believe. So the first spot I thought we could slide a drive would be right here between the power supply and the back wall divider. So I printed up this little bracket here this bracket is printed from uh, carbon fiber PETG, which is for those who know 3D printing stuff, if you don't, not a big deal, but um, it's just regular PETG, but with a carbon fiber dust in it, which gives it a little bit more rigidity. It makes it a little bit more heat resistant, not, not really too much. So that's gonna go in here. There's some holes back in here that I thought we could use to hold this bracket in, this adapter. I just have to get some screws and I guess we're going to need a hard drive. So if I remember correctly, again, it's been a while since I've worked on this, so I have to figure out which way these freaking things go in here. And then this will slide in this way. So 
So there we go, there's our first drive installed. I was just taking a look at uh, the version two case here off camera and uh, it, is, it is quite different inside. So the top three hard drives, the ones that I'm installing right now on this one, they're just completely different. At the top here, as so you can see, this has a steel plate that I'm using to mount the hard drives. This one does not have that. Well, I guess that just basically means that uh, we carry on with the V1 for now. And uh, this kit is just gonna be for the V1, I guess, unfortunately. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna snap in these rails here and you'll see how they work in a second. And we'll need another hard drive. Need some screws. Now I know at least one person out there is wondering why some of these brackets are white, some of them are black. The idea is to print them all in the black, which is the carbon fiber PTG. It's strong, durable, heat resistant. Um, but when I'm prototyping, I like to just use like whatever off-brand cheap PLA plastic because it's cheap and it's also biodegradable. So basically just want to wiggle this in, make sure it's going to clear everything. Basically gives us something that looks like this. And then next, the idea that it's going to go on top like this. So we mount these brackets actually to the hard drive first. And this just fits in here. trying to center it up a bit so it's not gonna touch either side of the case and vibrate. Now, there's these little clip things. One, two, three, and four. These little clip guys go down in here and they hook around the back of the motherboard case and uh, hold those in place. A couple screws. I'm also very concerned about this side panel closing because this hard drive looks like it's actually sticking up a little bit. I'm more convinced than ever that this is not gonna close. Definitely hitting the hard drive a lot more than I like. But I also see there's a gap. I know it's really hard to see, but there is a gap right here. And if, if I adjusted this size here to get rid of that gap, then maybe this would sink down far enough that the side panel would close. Okay, maybe no side panel for this thing for now. because so I definitely have to adjust that. That's what I mean. This wasn't quite 100% done. I would have liked to actually have this all fitting 100% before I was building this thing, but it's the way it is sometimes. All right, so our, our next piece here, is gonna hold two more hard drives. It's this bottom cage. This is gonna slot into the GPU slot down here and hold two more hard drives. So first things we need to do is mount two more hard drives in here. Now, how will this handle heat? I don't know. I did have a plan to put a 40 millimeter Noctua fan right in here to pull air out this way from basically this area here between the drives, but I hadn't got that far in my design yet. And now that I know this doesn't fit the version two really, it's gonna to be tougher for me to justify, I think, spending any more time on it. I've already spent hours and hours and hours on this, but uh, that's what five hard drives looks like in a NZXT H1 version one. But I am missing a SATA cable. So powering these drives, uh, let's see here. I got this cable, which will do two drives. So we'll just do one and two. And then I'm gonna need a third cable to power this one, this one, and this one. So give me a minute, cause I have to make one. I feel like some sort of barber or something. Okay. Custom cable's good. Okay, with the workspace becoming more and more of a mess, we're making some progress here. I got my custom cable built. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it does fit really nicely for the extra hard drives we need to power. I did take the riser cable out of this. Reason being, A, this is the version one. 
that has the fault with the riser and the screw holes where it can cause a short to ground and potentially cause a fire. So it just didn't need to be in there. If you have the upgraded cable or if you have the repair kit and you wanna be lazy and leave this in there, you can, there is room for it. So we're just gonna go ahead and pop my cable in. Now I'm sure you can see this bouncing a little bit. If I was to develop this further, which I'm unsure now if I am or not, because it doesn't fit the V2 and it's just already been a lot of time I'm not ever gonna get back. Um, if this is something that you're interested in, like if you yourself could see yourself using this or like would you consider purchasing a kit like this if it was available on my store, uh, can you do me a favor and just let me know in the comments because I, I often don't know what to like put my time into, like developing things like this or just making uh, videos about other content that's a little bit easier because Honestly, to design a kit like this from scratch to hold five hard drives in a case that was never designed for it, you know, it could honestly take me weeks, like not straight, but in my off time, um, you know, a few hours a night for a few weeks to get a kit that's actually really nice. So definitely some more improvements that could be made to this kit, but is it worth it? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so now we got powered all the drives and holy crap, this thing's getting heavy. So now that all these drives are powered, I need a physical data connection to the motherboard. This, this motherboard only has four internal SATA connectors, probably because no sane person should be using an ITX board for a server, and why would you need more than four internal SATA connections? But I have five drives here, so what I needed to do was buy this little dual internal SATA to PCI adapter off Amazon, which I will have linked below if you guys uh, see this card and you're like, oh, I need one of those. Um, it'll be down there. It did come with one half height and one full height PCI bracket to be installed in a regular configuration. However, if I pulled the, that PCI bracket off, it just friction fits in here pretty nicely. And my plan for this not to get jostled is once I connect the SATA cable to it, I'm gonna zip tie the SATA cable somewhere that adds a little bit of rigidity to this. For now, that's fine. So I just gotta find, I'll see if I can find five matching cables for my OCD. Okay, so that was completely insane just to get them plugged in. And now I have to somehow figure out a way to get this cable managed. Okay, so this thing in theory is all wired up and good to go. So give me like half an hour to clean this mess up and I'll be back. <sighs> okay, we're back. Man, I am so grateful that I decided to pick up a portable AC for in here because I would be dying right now uh, without it. So it's back assembled as much as possible. Like I said, I can't slide this cover on because it's hitting this one hard drive that's sticking up. I need to modify that one bracket, but that's okay for now. Now, I think I already installed TrueNAS on this when I was uh, playing around with it. I guess it was, started this over a month ago maybe, so I don't really remember, but I believe TrueNAS is installed on this. So my plan here is to plug the ethernet in, plug power in. Oh, apparently just like that, it's on. I must have it set in the BIOS to automatically turn on. So now I'm just gonna let this thing run for a few minutes. Hopefully my router assigns it an IP address and I can see it on the app on my phone and then uh, we can log in hopefully and see if all the drives are connected. Okay, well that was a great idea in theory, but in reality, that didn't work, so I need a GPU or something so I can see what this thing is trying to output. Okay, can I sneak this in here? No. So I'm gonna put this riser back in so I can try to get a display out to see what this thing is doing. Okay, TrueNAS is on this. Okay guys, so it's the next day. I honestly was so frustrated and confused with what even I was doing last night. So I'm just gonna recap this morning because I don't remember at all where I was at last night when I finally gave up on this and went to bed for the night. So the way this is installed is I have a, this is actually a mining riser splitter card here and it's splitting the PCI slot into two like physical X16 slots, but they're electrically connected at I think, I think X1, but allows me to run a GPU and also the internal SATA card, which allows me to add my fifth drive. I have to run it this way or else for some reason, this internal SATA drive doesn't work. If I plug the internal SATA drive directly in, it like gets hung up trying to boot into the SATA drive or something happens. But I also found as long as I run this splitter card down here, like in between the SATA card and the motherboard, everything works fine. So I can't really think of a good solution. I tried uh, calling Tristan yesterday. You seen him in a previous video, a good friend of mine. Um, we went through some stuff, 
and uh, tried a bunch of different BIOS settings. I even tried two different operating systems because originally I wanted to use TrueNAS and then I thought maybe it was a TrueNAS problem, so I tried Unraid. And then also last night, I couldn't get shares working in TrueNAS, so I just couldn't get, like, I couldn't get shares to just show up on my network, and I was just, it just seemed really complicated. And I'd used Unraid before in the past, and I just kind of think it's a simpler setup. So I just went with that for now. I really just needed these files to get up and accessible. So I wasn't really thinking, and I started moving all my data from my current storage server over onto this one with it sitting right here on the table. And yeah, so it's gonna take over a day. So yeah, what's next? Um, well, the outer case doesn't fit on this box because the hard drive is sticking out. So I'm gonna right now go in and I'm gonna tweak this bracket that holds this outer hard drive. Hopefully I can get it to come in a little bit. That way when it's done copying all the files over, I can shut this down safely and swap out that one bracket and uh, get the side panels to go on. Of course, the side panels won't go on with all this mess. So the only thing I can think of that might work is if I get an APU, which is so that I can plug an HDMI cable right into the motherboard to try to see what's going on. Cause I, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's changing the boot order when I install this card directly in the X16 slot. So swap out an APU in this, get that hard drive tucked in. Hopefully I can do away with all this. And well, if not, I got to figure out something else. So, so that about does it for this one. Like I said, uh, I didn't plan on making this video. It wasn't scripted. I had no idea how it was going to go together. It was just me pulling my hair out for 10 hours yesterday and trying to just film a video as I try to work through a bunch of problems. So I'm not even sure how this is gonna turn out. But anyways, guys, if you drop me a like on this video, if you liked it, uh, it helps out immensely. Leave a comment below. Tell me maybe what do you guys do for network attached storage? Uh, is there an easier way? All right, so I don't think I really have anything else to say about this one. Um, I gotta figure out where these video files are even going as this thing gets up and running and it's gotta move into its, you know, somewhat I guess I can't really move anywhere until I fix this mess so the cover actually goes on. But uh, anyways, get subscribed. I got to do a, a build in this white NZXT version 2 soon. All right, I'm just rambling, so I will see you in the next video. Uh, get subscribed, drop the video a like, all that good stuff, and I'll see you soon.